Coming up, last week we talked about attractions that needed to go, and this week we're talking about quick service restaurants that desperately need updated. From the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida, this is the Universal Edition of the Diz Unplugged. <laughs> Episode 194 of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. The Diz Unplugged Universal Edition is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect universal vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. I am your host, Craig Williams. Today, I'm joined alongside by my co-host, Mr. Rhino Clavin. Hello. And we have a humdinger for you. So uh, last week's episode was received pretty well, where we ripped apart some of the attractions that we don't like and we think need to get uh, the axe over at Universal Orlando. So we figured let's start now by moving on with that same concept of pure negativity and go after some of the worst things that you can find at Universal Orlando, and that is quick service restaurants. Uh, we've we've obviously lamented them for a long time, and you've seen a lot of the reviews, the really terrible ones. We have we still have a list of a couple that we need to go back and, and review now uh, that we haven't done for the first time on this show so uh it, it's not complete some of those are on this list too so uh just from past experiences of eating there without it being for the show so uh it's 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 gonna be a fun one uh ripping apart all of these places but only deserve it and in some situations we're talking about total revamp uh other situations we're only talking about the menu being updated obviously they're in land so you can only do so much you can't just change the theme of an entire restaurant but well, we'll get over that in a second, but uh, I want to talk about a, uh, a pretty cool offer that is available right now. So, Rhino, what happens almost all the time after after one of us upgrades our annual pass? Well, not upgrades, renews our annual pass. Well, they come out with deals where you can get more months for your annual pass, and they, they're like, okay, those two idiots have renewed. Now we're going to give you six months. I know, and that's that's exactly what happened. So I got un I was the unlucky one this year in that the three months free came out like a week after I upgraded. My I did. Annual I pass. did get the three months though. Yeah. I got the. I I did. I did. I was like, oh, it's not going to work. But and then it was like fifteen months. Yeah. Yay! And now, as Rhino just said, uh, <sighs> if only I'd waited. <laughs> yeah, it's it only you couldn't have waited. Actually, as long. yeah, I pretty much renewed it on the last day I could. So, yeah. uh, but as Rhino just mentioned, right now uh, you have the potential to sign up as an annual pass holder or renew your annual pass and get up to six months free. Uh, how do you do that? Well, for the six months free, since that's the one that gets pushed around a lot, I'll just say that's for the two or three park preferred or premier annual passes. So the high tiered ones, the ones that have absolutely no blockout dates at, at Universal Studios Florida and Islands of Adventure. And then obviously with whether you do two park or three park, that's where you, uh, you get the difference and all, all the perks that come along with it. But the good news too with it is that if you're not interested in those, you're still looking at doing a seasonal or power pass, you can still get up to three months free with that offer. So uh, that it, it's just an awesome deal. I'll say all around. If if you've been thinking about becoming a, an annual pass holder, but you're like, oh, I might only make it down like once or twice. Uh, it, obviously, now if you're able to do the ones that are with with the six months added, then right there you have 18 months to try to come as many times as possible to make make it worth it. Yeah. So uh, there are discounts at a lot of places with your annual pass you know not everywhere so i'm not going to say that it's it's one of those great things where you obviously always get a, an annual pass discount everywhere but there are there are plenty around there so that that cuts away obviously it cuts out the parking costs and valet and uh, per, uh preferred parking if you have the premier pass you have hotel discounts uh, which sometimes can be really, really good. And there's just, there's a lot of perks to it. So uh, obviously we're annual pass holders, as we've already said, living here. It's something 
even if I wasn't in this job and I wasn't, if I wasn't working for universal either, if I was just working for some other random job, uh, there's almost no doubt in my mind that if I had to, if I had to get a universal annual pass, I absolutely would. I think there's just, there's, there's so much to offer with it. So if you've been on the fence before about whether or not to get an annual pass, now is the perfect time. I have a, I have a question about this. Yes, do you sir. do you think that they're they're doing this to be like proactive to make sure they have as many people coming to parks as possible during 2019? I since since like if you buy it now, it, it goes through 20. Essentially, you buy your pass if you buy your pass right now in October. It's good until like 2020, like March and, 2020, yeah. March or April. So exactly, and uh, in this offer. Technically, if that's if you buy right now. This offer, you can still do the six months added through April 4th. Oh, wow. Jeez. Through next year? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's a... Never mind. I just texted somebody and was like, don't forget to get on this before the, yeah. before the offer's no, up. <laughs> yeah. No, you don't have to do it right away with that. You have through April 4th. So technically, uh, you know, if you wait until that very last second, you could be going through fall 2020 to That's crazy. Universal. So there could be another theme park at that point. <laughs> like, well, uh, no, let's no. pump the brakes. But there could be a, there could be, you know, new, I mean, I don't know what there could be. Anything's possible. I would say it's a, it's definitely a safe bet that uh, Potter, the coaster will be open by that point in time so yeah I, three years from now or two years from now right yeah yeah it's supposed to be open sometime in 2019 whether my guess is summertime it, it's a i it's supposed to definitely be open right around then i know there's a lot of pressure on hitting the timetable and not going not going any more over budget or also not uh mm. not taking longer to build so i can't say for sure when it's actually if anything ends up happening because that's it's common with parks and attractions is that everything looks like it'll be on time and then something something goes wrong and it delays the opening process so uh hopefully hopefully it will be but yeah you get this annual pass you're definitely going to be in time for the potter coaster and and more for sure so other attractions that'll open up so yeah it's a really good deal think about it Please. Yeah, I mean, we have no things on this. I know we mentioned like dreams from time to time on that, but uh, we don't. It, uh, dreams doesn't sell annual passes and stuff like that. I just, I think this is a great offer that everyone should know about. So now you do. And now with that, we will move on to our actual topic for the day, and that, of course, is the quick service restaurants that we think need to be updated and we are going to talk about one two three four five more than more than five i'll say we have six in total that we're talking about but one of them is kind of a bonus because there's more than one restaurant attached in the area so Mm. you can put on your thinking caps now because we're saving that one for last but i want to start off and talk about one well we're going to start off in universal studios florida and move to islands and then wrap it up with the last one but i want to talk about one of the things that we have hated more than any when it's come to a dining review and it's it's one of the busiest places you can see on a on a day-to-day basis with quick service and that of course is mel's drive-in mm-hmm. in hollywood and if you don't remember our review from Mel's, uh, it's basically a 50s themed burger joint right out of American Graffiti, in a sense, and all those all those great 50 movies that you know and love. So you have the option of getting burgers, a specialty cheeseburger, which is usually just a bacon cheeseburger, yeah. uh, the driest piece of grilled chicken that you can <laughs> ever find, uh, inedible uh, vegetable patties. And that's essentially it. And then, of course, fries. And they'll try to they'll try to push their terrible universal milkshakes on you too, unless you you stand up to them and yeah, tell them you like, don't want it. They like pressure you, and they're just like like oh, everybody wants a milkshake. Why you don't want a milkshake? Why wouldn't you want a milkshake? Oh, no milkshake. Like you have to like you have to like no no no. I'm sure. Oh, you're mistaken. You want the milkshake. Are no, you alive? I don't Do you have a pulse? Milkshake. Why don't you want a milkshake? Yeah. 
on this hot, hot day. Yeah. Nothing sits better in your stomach on a 90 degree day with 100% humidity than a big, milk. thick milkshake. <laughs> milk was a bad decision. <laughs> yeah, milk was a bad choice. Uh, so, yeah, Mel's drive in. The menu is terrible. The restaurant is loud and noisy, and it feels like it just attracts people who want to go in and scream at the top of their lungs for no reason. So, I, I hate this place. I don't like going in it. We had to go in there to meet one of Rhino's friends at one point in time. And I just, and we didn't, he wasn't inside. So it's like, we walked in this place for absolutely nothing. And it really upset me. I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's, there's Coke freestyle machines inside, but beyond that, there's not a lot going for it. So I despise it. I know you despise it too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like what it looks like. I just don't like anything else about it. Yeah. So what would we like to see in there? That's that's the secret part of this. I'd like to see I I'm okay if it still stays like burgers and stuff like that, but turn it into like an in and out style burger place. You know what I mean? Bring it back to like the classic like if you if we're gonna keep it into the, like the fifties and stuff like that, maybe people on roller skates. I don't know if I want to see people roller skating around in there uh, at all, ever. But I actually was kind of going with the same idea. I didn't think in and out immediately though but the sure. first thing i thought about was actually steak and shake go for the thin mm. greasy steak burgers mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you know then also steak and shake half of the recipe is milkshakes and <laughs> i feel like that is something that you would expect at a at a 50s well, car yeah, like diner a, show is, a soda shop or something yeah. like that you know you, I, I want more of that uh the artist who i cannot remember who always paints like the kid sitting next to the police officer at the counter sipping the drink are you talking about like uh, the Saturday Norman Rockwell? Evening? Yeah, yeah, there it is. Yeah. Okay, I knew it would come to me. Sorry, I yeah. want that sort of an environment. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I I kind of agree with you uh, on that sense. But yeah, I would like to see. I know it really is a weird step backwards in that to say like I want really disgusting greasy burgers in there. But yeah, that's kind of what I want. Like that, maybe some crinkle cut fries to go along with that feels a little bit more old fashioned in that sense. Uh, I would love to see like grilled cheeses on the menu kind of like actually basically what bread box is kind of go for that style but put in here a mixture of sandwiches that are are a little bit more unique but with the burgers mm -hmm. added in as well or like a, a a chain here in orlando that's starting to build up bigger toasted kind of oh, mixture God, i love toasted so yeah. I, I feel like that would go in there because their menu is a mixture of burgers and fancy gourmet grilled cheeses you know what it is too it, it, it does it's it, sim simple classic but done well yeah. you know what i mean it's something that like it's not going to be that you, you to do something like that's what i love about toasted is how it's just classic it makes you feel good but it's just like it's grilled cheese yeah but it's good grilled cheese you know do something like that in there make it quality make it fashion <laughs> I agree with that. And uh, so we are moving on to our next restaurant that we think needs to be updated. And this is also falling in the same line of burgerdom. And it's another one that I, I, I don't remember hating it that much. But uh, when we were coming up with this list, we had to agree that regardless of whether or not we truly hated it or just thought it was okay or meh, it's not really necessary with all the other food options that are around Universal, and that's Richter Burger over in mm. San Francisco. So obviously it's right after the big one hit, the big earthquake, and so you're in a dilapidated, uh, earthquake-ridden building and everything's falling apart around you. And uh, the main menu, again, is very similar to Mel's and that you have burgers, specialty burgers. You got the toppings bar over here so you can top it up with the most watery lettuce you can find mm. and the <laughs> the whitest <laughs> lettuce that you can find. <laughs> and uh, well and also the whitest onions, that's a good thing. Uh the most uh slimy tomatoes you can find <sighs> though and then of course for an extra price you can always add on the smallest cup of guacamole <laughs> that you can and possibly And the bore line grayest guacamole you'll yeah. ever see and you know there's there's more to this menu too uh, they have they have chicken there i believe they have a hot dog as well but again it follows in the same trap kind of as mel's it's it's these basic burgers and stuff yeah you can make them a little bit fancier with the toppings or by getting the specialty burger or adding on extra patties whatever but it's just kind it's lazy 
theme park burgers. And and so in my opinion, at Universal, it, they made the best burger place when they went over and did Krusty Burger inside mm-hmm. Fast Food Boulevard. And I know you could say that, well, that's basically like the rest of them. But I don't know. Maybe it's just the mindset of being in there. Well, they committed to what they actually are. Like, that's the humorous part is about, like, Krusty Burger is like, okay, this is the whole theming of this yeah. restaurant is that it's terrible. You know, and like, and so you go in thinking like, ah, I'm at one of these terrible, and then it's better than terrible. So yeah. you're like, oh, this is great. But also, they take the standard issue and they elevate it just a little bit by having, like, the crusty sauce and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, hey, Richter Burger... Honestly, the problem is the I, I like the amount of seating that's in there. It's easy to get a seat, any even on a busy day. But ultimately, the food is boring and it needs updated. And Rhino, on this one, I have an idea of what I think should go in there. But what do you think? Well, I this is one of the places where I think they should just like change it completely. I don't want it updated or anything like that. I don't like the idea that there's a restaurant that kind of is like, look at this fun thing based around a tragic um, natural weather mm-hmm. thing, you know. Um, so I'd like to see something that's kind of like if you've ever been to Disney California Adventure, like the Pacific Wharf, where there's like sourdough and the bread bowls and like maybe like sandwiches and stuff like that. I'm thinking something a little more bread oriented. And I was close to that because I also had a similar mindset. You went with that side of it. Uh, we already have Lombards right next door. So you got the seafood. Yeah, that's right. I almost said seafood, but I was like, we've got the sit down one. So yeah, and you have that taken care of. So I thought next, like, what do I and maybe this is just stereotypes driving this one. But I thought next, like, well, what do I then associate with with um, San Francisco with San Francisco and the next thing that I thought of, which is also in that Pacific Wharf area at California Adventure, is oh, Asian dining. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good idea. So I and I, I don't know if we're talking in this sense of only sticking with like basic Chinese food, Chinese American food, or even getting a little bit more creative and going with uh, you know ramen or oh, some God, other specialty ramen right bao, now. Some bao over there yeah. would be nice. Um, there is not a, is I'm trying to think is there a place that offers Asian food in Universal Studios Florida in that no, park no not in that park yeah so it would expand the offerings in the park as well yeah no I, I think it would expand the offerings and it's it's a food group that I think is obviously something that's an easy go to so uh, as long as it followed a very basic style like a restaurant we're going to talk about later mm-hmm. on in this one uh, it's easy to make. It's, you know, I feel like when you have your local Chinese places, everyone has like the one that they love and then they hate every single other one. Like the Chinese food that I love here in Orlando, my, my crappy cha- takeout Chinese that is, I drive 30 minutes away to get it because it's the only one that I've had that I Kim truly Lou? like. No, oh. I'm not giving away my secret. I don't want, oh, I don't want people to know where I drive to for my Chinese. <laughs> I don't need that judging. Just, just saying alone that I drive 30 minutes to get Chinese takeout is, is bad enough considering you basically, oh, anywhere I know, I know where world, you go. You can find yeah. in a 10 minute radius around you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so like that's the one I love, but then you always do have, There is one particular chain restaurant I'll I'll talk about. We're going to talk about it later, but like Panda Express that has become nationwide. It's because the recipes for what they make there are very straightforward and simple, and but also people find them to be very delicious. So it's like if you can find a Chinese style like that, put it inside Universal Studios Florida in this area, I feel like it could end up being a massive hit. Mm-hmm. But I would also like to see bao and ramen and stuff like mm-hmm. that, too, to be a little more. And eclectic. they're not afraid to do it because they serve in the bow at that bar on uh, the rooftop. Yeah, they're serving at the top at Aventura and then in the, the food court down below. Oh, there's, there's ramen and, down there, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So that's what I think about Richter Burger. But now we're going to move over to Island of Adventure and we're going to talk about one of our worst reviews ever. That we have done, uh, just we we hated it so bad, so so bad, <laughs> and that is Blondie's over Blondie. in Toon Lagoon. 
And uh, it, it, it tastes like what that noise sounds like. Blondie. Yeah. And so not only is this restaurant terrible because you walk inside and there's pretty much no seating. There's six, seven, eight tables. And the there's a lot more people going in than there's actually tables there. Yeah, the line split when it's busy. They're split up into two sections. But uh, it when you walk up to the counter, it feels like it's going. It's a sandwich shop. So it feels like it's going to be like a subway where it's like, oh, I can choose two lines and take care of all that. And you can't you do have that option uh, for your sandwich to, to choose how you want it. The signature sandwich there is the Dagwood. And that is like what you're you're seeing outside, too. It's supposed to be the most the biggest, most triumphant sandwich. And instead, it's a pre-made piece of crap. Ugh. And just done terribly and then there's also a, a variety of hot dogs inside there too which that's what i, I saw nathan's through. hot dogs or yeah. something too right that's the nathan's hot dogs or what their hot dogs are all over the park besides uh in oh. city walk but yeah it's just a mess this place is so small so compact uh and just not not comfortable inside and then it's just the the dagwood sucks and the hot dogs aren't much better. And then I feel like you, you do have all those sandwiches and stuff. But, yeah, it's still... It, it's not a it's good a environment. It's not good quality food. It's just... It, in, it, 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 and it's like what you said. The, the whole thing is you've got this giant sandwich that advertises here. And you cannot get that giant sandwich. And you know who would be most disappointed about this? Joey Tribbiani. Because sandwiches are his favorite food. Yeah. So what would we put in here? I don't know. So, so, so something I, I try to think like, okay, something themed, maybe something that they don't have. I honestly wouldn't mind if it was a good sandwich place. I, I that's exactly what I was like gonna say. Like a firehouse type place, you know. Yep. I was gonna say, uh, sandwiches are universal. <laughs> 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 sandwiches are universal though and it's obviously the, new, the name of the new show is sandwiches yeah, yeah. we've changed the name now <laughs> that's the new podcast it's a dis unplugged sandwich edition <laughs> uh sandwiches are universal and there's a reason why subway is the biggest chain in the united states like there's more subways than anywhere else you see them at gas stations you see them it's because people love sandwiches and it doesn't take a lot of effort to make sandwiches good. I'm not saying Subway is the best sandwich you'll ever find, but you know what? It comes through when you need it. Well, and that, and you know, I, honestly, I feel like in theme parks in general, there's not a lot of access to something. Like sometimes you, I don't want a burger. I don't want this thing. I yeah. Sometimes I just want something simple like a sandwich, just a good sandwich, yeah. you know? And I... I, it, oddly enough, that is like an underutilized thing in, I feel like, all theme parks, Disney and Universal. Yeah. And so I would just like to see a good sandwich done here, if anything. And that's I think that would just fix it. Get rid of the Dagwood. I know it makes no sense then with the whole Blondie's tie-in. Whatever. You can change it to some other comic and then put put whatever you want with it. Like, I, I don't care about the theming in this sense, but just make it all made to order subs and do it in that style. It is just cans of spinach and nothing else. That's how you keep it in theme with Popeye and everything. Yep, that would also work too. A spinach only restaurant. If you want a spinach salad, you can do that. And I would like to see that do that too, is where you have the choice of sandwiches or salads and you can build your own and that's it. Mm -hmm. And I think that would work with Blondie's. So uh, sticking in the Toon Lagoon section, there is another restaurant here that we haven't reviewed for the show yet. I did it. Uh, it's been years since I've done it. I'll say that. It's been like three years. But it was so bad that I just I will never be able to forget it in that sense. And I think I did talk about it a little bit on the show and uh, because it was part of back when we wasted money on the Universal Dining Plan a few years back. Uh, but that is Comic Strip Cafe also in Toon Lagoon. And the issue with Comic Strip Cafe, like a lot of the Universal restaurants, is it is just a complete mishmash of food options. So uh, just to run over what you'll find in here, uh, you'll find anything from uh, chili dogs to cheeseburgers to grilled chicken sandwiches to fried fish that you can then do with chicken and fish combos or fish and chips. So going for that... Going for that Long John Silver style, I get it. Makes sense. Chili cheese dogs, cheeseburgers, fish, chicken, 
And then we get into what we weird, get into the like, Chinese section where we have uh, where we have like the dragon platter with sweet and sour beef and broccoli, uh, and then we move into the Italian section where we have pepperoni pizzas, we have cheese pizzas, specialty pizzas, spaghetti with meatballs, fettuccine alfredo's, chicken Caesar. The issue with this place is there are some food items in here that are done well in other parts of the property. Like, I like Louis. I think you can get decent Italian in there. How they can make it okay there and not okay at yeah. Comic Strip Cafe is kind of mind-boggling. But you know what? It's I get it. It's a, it's a big resort. You can't keep things consistent. The Chinese thrown in just doesn't really make a lot of sense. I The beef and broccoli isn't awful. But isn't awful shouldn't be your gold standard no. for anything. And then the rest like fish. Well, how much would that beef and broccoli cost you? The beef and broccoli uh, right now is around $11-ish. Yeah. So I uh, overall, it's just too much trying to happen in one. It reminds me of Seinfeld with uh, Babu Bot's <laughs> cafe, World Cafe, where he has just 30 different countries all mixed into one restaurant and trying to do them all. And then Jerry makes him change and just completely ruins him and eventually gets him deported and all that. But that's what I feel like comic strip cafe is. It's just too much happening and it's all kind of mediocre. So it doesn't end up well. So, uh, Rhino, what would we want to put in here? Hmm. I mean, I, I, it's like what you said. It's it's all over the place. So I'd like something maybe a little more singular vision. Yeah. Um. I don't. I don't know though because like we said sandwiches and then they've got burgers at Popeyes. Or not Popeyes. Wimpy's. Mm-hmm. And um. But that's not open again. So that's oh, already well, there. Closer. You go. So I. I don't know. I mean, it do- it doesn't even have to be anything extravagant. It can literally be just accessible stuff. If you want it to be like chicken nuggets and something like that, maybe it's all chicken based uh, stuff. I don't know, but I just I, I pick it pick a pick a venue and stick with it. Yeah, I'll be honest. I'm kind of with you on this that it doesn't really it doesn't really make sense to me with what could fit in here well. And we know that like food hall style food courts work. It, it works all over the place. It works at Art of Animation. It works for the most part at Aventura. It works at Cabana Bay. So it's not like it's out of it's out of the realm for food courts to serve all these different style of foods and still work. It just doesn't seem to work in this theme park environment for Universal, at least with Comic Strip Cafe. I think one of the things that even though there's plenty of uh, plenty of sit down options in City Walk table service options, I think the theme parks each could do a little bit better by having one extra table service restaurant inside of them. I agree. So I think with Comic Strip Cafe, I would rather just see it completely replaced with a table service restaurant. It's a big restaurant. There's lots of room. Uh, and, you know, eventually Toon Lagoon will go and will be replaced and all of that. Make it a, like a character meet and greet. You can like, like Betty Boop can be like coming around through there with like Popeye and all those, yeah. all those guys and stuff like that. And that's, that's exactly what I was thinking. Some type of, some type of character dining experience with all of those classic characters. I don't know how popular it would be, but go with a nice basic American food style menu just you know maybe maybe almost even diner style and i feel like that would do better than what's currently there but regardless comic strip cafe avoid it and we'll go review it again and maybe it'll be different and maybe we'll want this list changed but i highly doubt it so that takes us to another place in islands of adventure that we had a good meal there but not in its typical sense we had a good buffet style meal there during the holidays and that of course was our grinch and friends breakfast which is held in circus mcgurkis cafe stupendous Mm. i don't like how you just said that Mm. that's unnecessary (laughs) (laughs) okay so uh much like what we just said about uh comic strip cafe uh the issue again runs in with Universal just throwing too many random things in, uh, specifically in this case, cheeseburger, chicken, and then what is the other food type they have in here right now that you hate? Spaghetti. 
at a theme well, park, it's not going to be good. Like, it's gross. It's literally all I can think about when you think of Circus McGurkis. I think about a tent filled with spaghetti, and that sounds like a nightmare to me. And again, I like the Louis Italian. I haven't had the Italian inside Circus McGurkis because why the heck am I going to go in there to get spaghetti? And I think that's what it comes down to. So maybe it's amazing, but nah, no. Um, I just, this place is. I think it's a mixture between the birds flying through because there's there's openings because that's where uh, High in the Sky Seuss Trolley Train Ride does run through. So yeah. there's always just birds flying inside of there. It's big. It's open. It's empty. It's echoey. Yeah. And then the food's just subpar yeah. and not really inspired by anything at all. Look, look and if you're going to never open green eggs and ham, put it in there. And that's exactly what I was going to say, uh, yeah. is I, I would have an asterisk on all of this list, because that's what I do right now. Asterixing is my thing. <laughs> and uh, green eggs and ham, I think that needs to be updated because it's never open. So if it's never open, it's clearly because of uh, What's crowds, going on? food, all of that. Let's, let's take that concept and... Circus McGurkis needs to be a Seuss-inspired restaurant because that's where it's in. It should have green eggs and ham. I think it should have year-round, even though it would only make most sense during the Grinch the fizz season. Pheasant. Well, that uh, the big carved roast beef. Yeah. Beast. And just anything that has ever been mentioned in a Dr. Seuss book that's food-related Let's go ahead and try to put it in this restaurant. Yes, it's going to be what we just complained about. It's going to be a mishmash, but it's a mishmash all under Seuss. Make it cool stuff. Make it, you know, if it takes you dropping three tablets of are you something into a food, like food coloring into yeah. mashed potatoes, and now they're purple mashed potatoes or something like that. It's just like, it, it feels like what could be one of the most imaginative lands themed yeah. around some of the most imaginative books we've ever read has the least imaginative food. Yeah. So no, it's just I, it's mind boggling. I agree. So it's and I feel like it can be, it can be created interesting enough. Yeah. Like you can just take it, take a hamburger and make it a weird shape. Like that's part of Seuss Landing is that like if you look at all the palm trees, they're all damaged from hurricane winds that they brought in specifically like that because it matches Doctor Seuss's style where nothing is just straight and boring. Yeah. Everything has a unique side to it. So the food can be pretty straightforward with still chicken and burgers and things like that. But ultimately it needs to be done with creative colors, creative mm -hmm. shapes, uh, just to maybe take a couple ingredients and twist them and make them more unique. I'm at, I'm not talking about bringing back weird colored ketchups. You, you, all right. Hines, you, you, but. Lo you love, oh yeah, bring in the Shrek ketchups when all else fails. <laughs> Uh, you know, okay, so, like, why isn't there, like, a cat in the hat? Like, white, red, white, red, white, red, like, milkshake. They love the f milkshake so much. I wouldn't even, a piece of cake. Think about that hat is a seven-layer cake. Oh, yeah, there you go. It's, a, it's something simple I'm like that. I'm going to have a Dr. Seuss themed party the more we think about this. Yeah. I'm like, hmm. Yeah, actually, this will be great for when we do open our officially licensed <laughs> yeah. Dr. Seuss cafe yeah. somewhere here in Orlando, so... We're we certainly not calling it McGurkis. Yeah. We'll call it the Chortle. <laughs> Myrtle's Chortle. We're not going to call that either. But Circus McGurkis, get your act together. Become inspired by the area that you're in. I don't know how someone hasn't suggested it already. Maybe people have, and they're like, nah, no, not worried about it. But uh, I sure, I'm sure once the new Grinch movie comes out, uh, considering... It's it's longer based that they're going to go in the Grinch's fridge at some point and they can pull ingredients from there. Unless the Grinch just eats like mayonnaise all the time oh, God. and sugar. I don't know. I feel like that's what Jim Carrey probably would eat. I know. He ate glass. That's right. Yeah. I, I, I You know I hate that movie, but I'm very much looking forward to the Benedict Cumberbatch animated version. I like Benny. I'm excited too. Somebody the other day was like, it's been done. And I'm like, Yeah. Yeah. But I don't, it's being done again. So been, I want to see it again. It's only been done once as a movie. And I would argue it hasn't been done well yet. So you anything that hasn't like been perfected yet. One? What? You don't like the classic one? The animated the, short? The Boris Karloff? Yeah, one? that's yeah. it's a 30 minute short. So I wouldn't call that a movie. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I so see what you're saying. Yeah. I would consider that a, a short feature, but I wouldn't call that a, a full length feature. 
that would only be the Ron Howard version, and I that is not a well done version. So I'm looking forward to seeing a well done version, at least medium rare, mm-hmm. medium well. I screwed up that joke. That was awful. So we're going to come to our last place that we think desperately needs updated. And I've already mentioned the one restaurant in here before, but I am talking over in City Walk about the chain fast food area on the second floor right across from Breadbox and right by the Cinemark and all of that that includes the BK Whopper Bar, Panda Express, and then Moe's Southwest Kitchen. And I'm going to say up front, these places are typically very busy, uh, especially at night. Uh, I've, I've waited in lines way longer than I should have ever waited before uh, back in the day, back before Breadbox was there and, you know, we'd be drinking at cigars and stuff and then decide that you get hungry all of a sudden. It's weird. You you drink and you get hungry. It's like it just goes together. But we would do that and then we'd be like, oh, okay, well, I want to I wanna go over and get a big burrito at Moe's. And so that's where your bad life decisions take you. And so it was good for that. And you'll wait like we'd wait 30 minutes for food sometimes there. And Panda Express always has a long line. And, uh, you know, the Whopper bar usually can get through there pretty quick because it's just a Burger King with a built in Toppins bar. Yeah. But ultimately, I, I think this is great for like team members who work at universal who want to do instead of like going to the team member grills and stuff for lunch that if they have enough time to walk over and get fast food, this is a great option for them so they can have like chain fast food, but also, you know, not, not take the time with anything else. Like, you know, going in bread box, stuff like that, sticking, sticking with more normal options. But for the average guest, I think it's boring. Well, the thing is, it's like in, in, my home to like hometown in nowhere you know ville a, there is a burger king a moe's and uh well there's no panda but there's plenty of like there are plenty of fast food uh chinese places and so it's kind of like it that area where i i'm not really like oh i don't like it because i don't like the food or anything like that i just feel like at this moment in time with the food revolution at um city walk it feels like it's a little out of place where it was like they've had a lot of like like you said bread box is a sandwich place but it's good and it's different i don't that i don't go to that type of a sandwich place anywhere else you know so i i think it kind of you know, they've got Hot Dog Hall of Fame. There's some options here where you could, like, spruce it up a little yeah. bit. But ultimately, it, it is boring. I mean, there's – you can't – there's a Burger King everywhere. So even right. your small town, if you want to talk about it in that sense, it's – we were seeing Burger Kings in Rome when we were just yeah. there. They, they're they everywhere. Uh, Moe's, I don't – I don't know how far those spread throughout the country. The, the, I think they're currently like spreading like crazy yeah. because it, I'm not from an area that normally that would be something that's yeah. like there, I guess. So I don't like I don't know if it makes it all the way out to the West Coast. Uh, I, I didn't even know that it started in Atlanta. But when I ran that Most race in July, yeah, mm-hmm. we ran right past the original Moe's. Oh. So it was like, oh, that's cool. Um, but. Like so, I, I know it is very much dominant in the East Coast, especially in Florida. There's a lot around here, uh, and then Panda Express kind of the same way. They're everywhere. It yeah. Started in California, so it's definitely all throughout the nation. I get it that Universal also attracts a lot of foreign guests, so maybe this is stuff they don't eat as often and do enjoy. But ultimately, I think it's just for it's chains, I, yeah, in a, in a Universal space where they have tried to start weeding out some of those right and i I, i'm not even against it being necessarily a chain because there's more than one cowfish like but i mean i don't know that two starts it as being a chain if it has to be more than two but i i had um there's so you talk about foreign guests like wagamama was really big when i was in england and um they have a couple in the united states there's like three or four in new york and like two in massachusetts and i think there's one in another state too but like that's really good yep. Asian inspired food. And it, again, like I know we keep coming back to ramen, but it wasn't just ramen. It was like ramen. There was rice bowls. There was sushi. Well, I don't know if there was sushi, but uh, it's all that sort of stuff. And it, it was done well, but it's also like, I can't find it anywhere. So when yep. I like fly into Logan airport, I try to go to Faneuil hall to the one that's there. And so it's like, I, 
I want more. So like it can be that type of food. Just give me something that's a little uh, harder to get to a little more. It makes it more special because you're on your vacation. You know, the idea being like you're you're going to not just see these attractions you can't get anywhere yeah. else. Make it food like that, too. Well, and that's exactly what I was just going to suggest is that uh Walt Disney World with Disney Springs has done a an okay job now of trying to bring in at least like with the polite pig mm-hmm. they brought in a Orlando restaurant group and put them in there then then with the Four Rivers mm-hmm. uh, barbacoa they've obviously brought that in again in another way uh, I think it's time for Universal to jump on board as well too I know these these chain restaurants will pay big money to be in those spots. But I would like to see either two or three unique original Orlando restaurants be featured in this area. What if like it was like Teak or something like that? I know that's too yeah. um, boutique, but and I think <laughs> I, I think Universal boutique. is doing well enough uh, with their burgers, with their creative craft burgers. Yeah, um, I like we've talked about Teak on this show before. I like it. However, it's always super busy in there unless you go on a bad time and even if you go in at a slow time almost 90 percent of the time my burgers have not been able to be cooked perfectly and oh, that's, that's a shame it's very simple to cook a freaking a, a hamburger almost anyone can do it so it should be easy to cook a medium hamburger without difficulties but you know i'm not here to rip apart teak but like uh there's so many food trucks that are looking to grow and become bigger in Orlando or have already started with a small marketplace. Uh, a sandwich shop that Rhino and I really love. Oh, yeah, that would be called, great. Called uh, Badasses mm-hmm. here in Orlando. Started as a food truck. They have one solo location now. Even though you already have bread box there, they do sandwiches completely different. That would fit in so perfectly there. Just small but really craft well-made sandwiches. Uh, I, there's another food truck that I love that has one location called uh, the Tamale Company that makes really, really good Mexican food. I mean, specifically tamales, but just really delicious. Uh, I'll even say poke has started to oh, that would become be good. Yeah. Finally, they're getting good fish into Orlando. And I know, you know we're surrounded by water on three parts of it but you know you need actually good fish uh you can't just throw in crappy tuna in it you need you need good sourced seafood to come in but orlando's starting to get that now and at good prices so we have a lot of poke places popping up i would love to see one of those pop up in this spot as well too um there's one hawaiian food truck that i absolutely love that is like You need a PhD to track them down sometimes because they're never going to normal places. They finally started going to the milk truck food district Mm. on Tuesdays a lot, but I'm busy on Tuesdays, so I can never do it. But yeah, there's there are so many local places here that need that chance to be represented in a bigger level. And what better area than right up here in Universal where they can have a nice small shared spot and really make a name for themselves and maybe move on to the next level. So that's my thoughts and yours too same yep so thank you very much rhino for I'm having this starving. discussion with we me. need to finish yeah <laughs> i'm i'm in the mood for a tasty delicious salad now that i have to go get so that will wrap us up for this episode so i already thanked rhino now i have to thank you for watching and listening along with this as as i always do we really do appreciate it we do it for you i hope you're getting enjoyment out of it and uh we've been saying it on some of the other shows i'll say it on this one too uh if you have any ideas suggestions of what we should do and upcoming shows i know we're going to have a question and answer show coming up soon so start thinking about that in the back of your head eventually the post will go out on facebook for that and you'll be able to to send us in your questions so so keep an eye on that and then of course anytime you want to email us questions at uo podcast at disunplugged.com you can do so and we'll save those for when we do our show but if you have any other ideas for shows that you want to see us talking about uh around universal just uh, Go ahead and let us know. So, you know, you can always tweet at us. I'm I'm at Teleclaster. Rhino's at Rhino1185. That's R-Y-N-O, not yes. R-H-I-N-O. Yeah, R-Y-N-O-1185. 
one one eight five, and it's easy to find us on social media. And then always, you can just tweet at us directly at Dis Universal, D I S Universal. And we, regardless, we'll get your stuff there, and then send us an email about it too, if that's your only way to get in touch with us on it. And then, of course, without I think it goes without saying, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can just comment down below. Because, again, we read every single comment, just whether or not we actually choose to interact. Mm -hmm. so, some weeks do it more than others, but always, always reading every single comment that comes in. So thank you again to everyone out there. Uh, if you need more information, disunplug.com, home of our show notes page, this show, and all the other shows on the Dis Unplugged Podcast Network. Uh, you'll find links to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram there, and a link to our email if you already forgot what it is. If you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you still haven't. And of course, leave us comments down below, if, even if it's not show suggestions, just what you think about some of the restaurants we talked about in here. If you think there's ones that we missed and should have been added to this list. And and also, going along with that, uh, if you're listening to this on iTunes, go ahead, subscribe, rate, and review us. So thank you again to everyone out there. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back with you next week for another episode of the Dis Unplugged Universal Edition. But until then, remember, we still have not changed the name, and we will never change it to sandwiches. <laughs>